video to show you how to insert Google Slide presentations into Nearpod. So first thing you're going to do is log into your account and then when you're on the, your main landing page here for my lessons, you click the create button. You can click it up top here or here. Now, it says Google Slides here, which makes you think you want to click there, but we don't want to use that portion. We're going to take an already created Google Slides lesson that you could buy on Teacher Pay Teachers or create yourself, and we're going to turn it into a Nearpod lesson. And what it does is it basically takes a picture of each slide um, in your Google Slides presentation and puts it into Nearpod. So we're going to click Upload Your Own Files. We want to get it from our drive here. We're going to log into our drive. Now, here you might see the um, lesson that you want to do. I don't see it, so I'm going to write adding integers. And I'm going to search. Now, I would expect it to be here because that's what it's named, but it's not at the top, so I'm going to scroll a little bit and find it. You have the option to create a PDF viewer or upload as individual slides. We're looking for individual slides here, so we're going to click that. Now, while the file is processing, you can see here in the gray box, and you're going to start to see them load there. I'll just tell you the reason why I use this method is because it allows me to create my lessons how I want in the program that I want, and then I take a picture and insert it into Google Slides or save it as a PDF and then um, turn my PDF into pictures that I enter, insert into Google Slides. I do this so that I retain the ownership of my slides. They're in my personal um, Google Drive that can carry with me anywhere I go. Um, I did make the mistake earlier on in making Nearpod lessons and then what happens is um, if you change schools and they don't have um, a Nearpod uh, school account, you don't have as much storage, and you run into some other issues. And then everything's hosted on Nearpod, and so if you don't have a Nearpod account, you basically lose all the work that you did. Um, another reason is because if you do purchase um, slides from Teacher Paid Teachers, so or you want to use a resource like that, this allows you to put it in really quickly. Okay, so now we can see all the slides are in here. This is perfect. Um, we do want to rename it, adding integers. Um, and then that's the first task, super easy to do, just click on it and then you can see all our slides here. Now if you're familiar with Nearpods, you know that you can present and then also have the students do the work. Uh, so in order to get that um, to be possible for these student slides, obviously the do now is for the students, you want to convert it to a draw it slide. So this makes it super easy. I design all my lessons. Um, in a way that allow me to do that. Now you can see I just chose the option to keep a copy. Um, I'm going to show you that again. So convert to draw it. Obviously for a do now I don't really need to keep a copy but there are cases where you would want to keep a copy. So since I did that by accident I can see that this can get deleted and my draw it slide for my do now is here. Now this is an area where I might want to keep a copy right here. All my um, teacher paid teachers slides have a try it on your own so you're just going to find those words typically in blue and you're going to turn those to convert it uh, to draw it slides. So in this case sometimes I do keep a copy because if you want to give directions to a student if you send them a draw it slide immediately they're clicking on that um, marker or the text box and they're working and they're not listening to the instructions. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll present this slide to them and say, okay, now you're going to do this work on your own. Let's look at the directions and let's look at how um, I expect you to do that. And you give those directions to them when they have um, the presentation slide, not the draw it slide, then you can transfer over to the draw it slide. Um, and then if you have two back to back, like I sometimes like to do a quick assessment, for my students, see who is struggling, and then the second assessment, I'll uh, go visit the students at their desk that need help or pull a quick small group. Um, and so I will convert this one to draw, but I'm not gonna keep a copy, I'm just gonna replace it. And so you'll see the difference right here. This um, adding integers allows me to present the instructions, this gives them the draw it, and then this is the second draw it slide right there. So you wanna continue through the whole presentation um, doing that, you can preview the work, uh, so when you're done you can go in and preview that this looks the way that you intended and all of your try it slides are in fact draw it slides and this allows you to kind of go through over here um, and when it's correctly done as a draw it you'll see these tools appear here where students can write on they can put their answers um, in the text boxes if they need to if they struggle to use 
the writing tools and they could add images. So sometimes in math you can have them do the work um, in their notebook and then take a picture there with their Chromebook. Uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. Please reach out with any comments or questions, and thank you for watching.